Hello. My name is Elon Osborne, and I like to talk about movies, audio, and music. And today I'm going back to the basics. You watching this right now might just be starting to get into home theater, and maybe you just picked up your first receiver and are wondering, what the heck are all these things on the back? Well, today's example would be the Marantz SR7015, just because I happen to own one, and it has a lot of stuff on the back. So you can still follow along no matter what you own, since yours will most likely have most of the same inputs and outputs to some degree. So let's do this, shall we? Hooray. Starting with the top corners, we have our Bluetooth slash Wi-Fi antennas, which allow your receiver to accept Bluetooth or Wi-Fi signals, like if you're streaming music from your mobile device. Moving to the right, we have our legacy digital audio connectors, legacy meaning older connector types that aren't used all that much anymore. The coax inputs are single RCA cables that connect to your cable box or DVD player if they happen to have a coax output or use the optical input if you have an older TV that has HDMI but doesn't support ARC or audio return channels. Moving along, there's the LAN or Ethernet port for a more reliable wired connection to the internet. Or perhaps you're connecting a computer or network storage drive to it, like if you have your movie or music collection ripped to some external hard drives. Next up, we have a bunch of HDMI inputs and outputs. Your receiver may have more or less, but the idea is still the same. Connect a variety of more modern components to the receiver, such as a cable or satellite box, DVD or Blu-ray player, gaming console, etc. Although on this receiver specifically, it supports HDMI 2.1 and 8K signals into this HDMI port only. Number seven, say if you have a PS5 or Xbox Series X and wanted to enjoy a next-gen 4K 120Hz gaming experience. This receiver is also equipped to have a Zone 2 HDMI output, like if you wanted to watch something different in the master bedroom versus the living room. Otherwise, you would just use this main Monitor 1 output, which as you can see supports ARC and eARC, enhanced audio return channel, and 8K output up to 60 Hz. And lastly, a Monitor 2 output, if you want a copy of what's coming out of the main output to go to a second TV or video monitor. Moving down, we have 12 volt trigger outputs. The most common use of this is connecting an external amp, which then turns on automatically when the receiver is turned on. To the right, we have an RS-232C connector to connect home automation control devices fitted with RS-232C connectors, such as control for home automation. Next, we have a flasher in jack for use with infrared control devices or remotes, like if your receiver is tucked away in a media closet. So you have to snake an infrared control device out of the closet so you can still control your receiver from your couch. Although this is a little old school since many receivers nowadays can be controlled by an app on your phone. Here we have a signal ground terminal used to connect a ground wire for a turntable. Next is control in and out for a more robust option of controlling this receiver via infrared devices if it's tucked away in a media closet, or connecting another compatible device such as a CD player and conveniently controlling it from the receiver. Moving on, we have legacy video inputs and outputs if your old school TV, DVD player, or gaming console only works with RCA cables, and also includes composite video outputs to be able to monitor what you see on a TV that doesn't support HDMI. Next is the component video inputs, which was the predecessor to HDMI, supporting higher video resolutions up to 1080p, splitting the signal into red, green, and blue colors, also known as RGB, and one component video output. Going back, we have FM and AM terminals used to connect FM antennas and AM loop antennas, which usually come with the receiver. Next up are your legacy analog audio inputs if your DVD player or gaming console only supports RCA outputs, and a phono input to connect a turntable. Next, we have the 7.1 channel audio input section. Some DVD or Blu-ray players are equipped with a 7.1 multi-channel output section, so you would just connect the corresponding inputs and outputs with RCA patch cables. But this means that the Blu-ray player's internal DAC, or digital to analog converter, processes the audio, and the receiver just distributes the analog audio to the speakers. This isn't common, but might be useful if you have a Sony player that can play SACDs and the DAC inside it happens to be better than the DAC inside your receiver. So it's probably pretty rare to utilize this feature, but at least on the Marantz SR7015, it's there just in case. Next is the pre-out section. 
First, we see Zone 2 and 3 audio out. If you happen to like multiple rooms being able to play different things simultaneously, like if you had a nice stereo hi-fi setup in a separate listening room, for example. To the right of those are the main pre-outs being able to connect and power your speakers with external amplifiers if you need more power than what the internal amps can provide. Although this section also includes the two subwoofer outputs to connect your subwoofers. No external amp needed since most subwoofers have their own internal amp already. Just FYI though, nowadays only receivers with 9 channels or more will have a full set of pre-outs like this. In your budget-friendly 5-channel or 7-channel receivers, the pre-out section will only consist of the subwoofer outputs, typically. Next up is the power cord terminal. Ta-da! That's it. And last but certainly not least, the speaker terminals, which connect your speakers via speaker wire. These can be assigned in the software to any number of configurations, like 5.1, 7.1, a 5.1.4 Dolby Atmos setup, a 7.1.4 Dolby Atmos setup with use of an external amp, 7.1 plus zone 2, or even 5.1 plus zone 2 and zone 3. Again, this may not be possible on your receiver, but the concept is the same. And there you have it. Well, that about wraps it up, folks. I sure hope you learned something from this since it can seem overwhelming if you've just purchased your first receiver or have upgraded to a receiver like the Marantz SR7015. Feel free to browse my video since I have reviewed many products, discussed many topics, and even made some tutorials on how to set up a Dolby Atmos configuration on a Denon or Marantz, since they are owned by the same company and have virtually the same software inside. Let me know what receiver you have and how many speakers you're rocking. As always, please be kind to each other out there. Don't just watch TV and movies, experience them. And of course, always be listening.